Hi folks, and welcome back to my channel. I was at a winter camp symposium here earlier in January, and uh, my buddy Rob gifted me some chaga. So I thought I'd do a video on processing it. Uh, this chaga isn't fresh, so it's dried out and it's hardened, and it can be quite difficult to process when it's dry. If it's fresh, it's easy to cut up while it's still got some moisture in it, and it's kind of a corky material. But as it dries out, it hardens, and it becomes a lot tougher to deal with. So I thought I'd just do a quick video showing one of the methods that I use for processing it at that stage. And all you really need is um, something to put your chaga in. So you can put it in your bag here. And then you're going to need something like, I just got a regular claw hammer here. If you've got a heavier hammer, that's even better. Um, but a hard surface, a bag to put your chaga in so that when you're smashing it up, as I'm sure you guys can figure out that's where this is going, um, it doesn't get everywhere. Put it on a hard surface like uh, I'm in the garage here today because it's been pretty much minus 40s for all this week. So we've got our chaga in our bag here. I'm just going to put it on the concrete uh, garage floor here. I've got my hammer. You're going to want to hold on to the bag because if you hit this, sometimes it will bounce. Um, you could wear eye protection, but because we've got it contained, I'm not too worried about pieces flying and hitting me in the face. So I'm not going to worry about that. Just gonna grab here, pound it up really good. And it's that simple. It's a lot easier than trying to cut it up when it's dry and hard. It takes minutes to process. And then once you think you got it all, maybe process that. I'll show you what it looks like here. I've got my containers here. Uh, this container, I usually put the larger chunks of chaga in, and then I've got my more fine ground chaga in this container. Some people refer to it as chaga. Um, I don't know if that's the proper pronunciation or not, um, whichever, whatever floats your boat there. So if I open this up, let's see if you guys can see that. So there's still some big chunks here. Ideally, I would like to have it smaller than that, and I can always pound those ones back up um, a little bit more. I think I will just because there's quite a few of them. But I mean, these little chunks, that's perfect for tea. If you're using this for tea, that's kind of the perfect size. Um, if you're using it for fire lighting, I usually prefer more of the fine powder, um, and the finer you can get it, the better. Uh, you can land a spark in here and get a good ember out of it, but I just find it's a little bit trickier to do, um, personal preference again. Uh, these I usually use for tea, and if you really want to make the most use of your chaga, what I'll do is I'll use these pieces for tea, and honestly sometimes I'll reuse them if I find that I'm still getting a really dark blue after like using these once, dry them out, use them again, if I'm still getting a really nice dark blue out of it, I'll use them two or three times until the tea starts to take on a weaker color. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll dry it out again, and then I'll pound it up and use it for fire. Now, I'm not sure whether or not it's still going to be as good for fire lighting after it's been brewed a few times as a tea, because a lot of those um, compounds are coming out of the chaga into your tea. So I'm going to experiment a little bit more this year and just see if it really affects the quality for fire lighting as much. So I'll do a control and I'll do um, I'll use some that hasn't been used in a tea, hasn't been brewed yet, and I'll test that against the stuff that has been used for teas and see if there's much of a difference with it catching a spark and holding it and uh, holding a good hand. So we'll do a video later on on, on that. Um, there's a lot of videos on YouTube about the medicinal qualities and values of, of chaga. And um, I might do a video on that one of these days um, between chaga and some of the other fungi and um, wild mushrooms and such that we have in this area, doing some, uh, maybe a video on medicinal mushrooms. But there are a lot of them out there on YouTube, so if you're looking for that, take a look. Um, I can't think of any good channels right now. I think um, Learn Your Land has one on uh, Chaga, and he's got a ton of knowledge, especially about the medicinal values of each 
of the different mushrooms and fungi. So that's a really good place to start. Check out his channel, see if he's got a video on that. Um, like I said, I'll see if I can get a chance to do one here later. But for now, I just wanted to show you, this is a really quick, easy way to process chaga. Obviously, it does take practice and it does take some experience to go out there and find these things and know what you're looking for, properly identify, obviously, um, and then learn how to process them and such. But it's totally worth it. Um, I've only been making chaga tea for probably maybe two years now. Um, and since then, I've just completely abandoned all medications, all over-the-counter medications. I don't use Advil, Tylenol, and anything like that. Um, but again, that's more personal preference. Um, I don't really like putting these things in my body and my stomach really doesn't appreciate them that much either. So this is a good alternative for me and it may be a good alternative for you as well. So hopefully you found this video useful. Um, I'll try and do maybe some more videos on other uh, fungi that we have in our area. Like I said, we do have uh, quite a bit of red belt. Um, I think I've got a couple of betulina uh, birch polypore mushrooms as well, and I'll probably go out and harvest some more of those hopefully sometime soon. Like I said, the weather's been really nasty here. It's finally nice again today, um, so hopefully I'll get out and do some stuff today, but that minus 40 weather, just a little bit too nasty to be out there for very long. So we'll give it another go here. I'll just uh, break this stuff up a little bit smaller until we have more of the sizes that I'm looking for here. So zoom back in here. You do obviously want to watch if you're using a hammer like this that's got the claws on the end. When you're hitting it, if the, those pieces want to bounce, make sure that you're not going to have that bounce right back into your face or you know into your body in any in any part because that could be very dangerous. one of these containers, but because I'm trying to keep them separated at this point, um, I might just sort through it a little bit more, pull out all the big pieces, and then put what's left into my fine um, powder container. And these containers are great. These are just little mini mason jars. They're perfect for holding my teas. And you can use this method for a lot of different fungi as well. Um, I've got a bunch of red belt right now, but it's an older red belt, so it's quite hard at this point. So I've already gone and trimmed off the outer edge of the polypore to use for teas, but the rest of it's quite hard. So you can put that in a bag again. You're probably going to want a bigger bag because the, the polypore that I have right now is probably about that big. Um, so, but you can smash it up with a hammer as well, and, uh, and that works pretty good. And red belt is quite uh, abundant in my area too, so that's a uh, that's one that I usually have quite a bit of. The chaga, um, there are areas around here. We're in uh, Alberta here, uh, northern Alberta. You're going to find it a lot more um, frequently, a lot more abundantly than in the central and southern part. But there are definitely areas around here that you can find chaga, um, but it's not. I mean, they, they say that it grows on like one out of every, I think, 10,000 birch trees. So I try not to harvest too much of it um, for just, um, just for harvesting etiquette, um, renewable resources and whatnot. Thank 
often over harvested and done because it's not very common. I don't want to uh, take more than I need. And like I said, this was actually gifted to me by uh, by my friend Rob. And I'm very grateful because I ran out of chaga a while ago. And I've gotten quite used to drinking my, my chaga tea and I really enjoy it. And I find it does help me a lot with uh, colds and, and bugs and such. Uh, I don't do well with prescription or over-the-counter uh, medications. I do have a sensitive stomach, so um, those things tend to bother me a lot more than these natural teas and such. So if you have a problem with taking uh, certain medications, these are a great um, resource to use. Just to give you an idea of how much chaga we have, um, I've already separated some of it into my jars here and there was already some in these jars. Um, but just from that one piece of chaga, um, we're going to end up with quite a bit here, and this will last me a very long time, even though I do tend to drink a lot of um, chocolate tea, probably more than the average person. Um, but I mean, this much should last you a long time, especially if, like me, you're, you're doing that multiple brewing system. Um, because I'll drink, you know, one or two cups a day sometimes. Um, and I do have to watch myself because I probably would drink more but um, I try to keep it down to about one or two a day, and some days, you know, if I don't think I need it, then I'll try not to use, try not to use more than that. Um, one of the benefits of chaga is that it is an immune-modulating mushroom, so that means that not only, mo most people tend to refer to, refer to it as immune-boosting, and that is a property of it, but it's actually an immune modulator, which means that if your immune system is working in, in overdrive, then it will help to bring that down, calm it down, um, and help you in that way. But if your immune system is weakened, then it will help to boost it. So it's a really good mushroom to use because it can work either way. And sometimes we don't know or we don't realize that um, when you're sick, it's not necessarily that your electrolytes or that your immune system is, is down or is weakened. Sometimes it's working in overdrive and that can make you sick as well. Um, and it can affect your body in different ways. So having a modulator is a really good option.